I have here behind me a groundbreaking advancement in the screen printing space by a company called Xtools. Before we get into the software and actually doing our first test print, I'm gonna show you guys the machines and also go over a few mistakes that I made so I can help you guys avoid them. Quick disclaimer, although they did send me this machine for free, all my thoughts are my own, okay? So I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I don't like something, I'm gonna tell you. I'm never going to take sponsorships and say what the brand wants me to say. I'm gonna say whatever I feel, okay? That's how I've always been. If at any point you guys wanna buy this exact kit that I have, I linked it in the description below. It is an affiliate, so when you buy it, it does help the channel out, and it happens to be on sale right now, so definitely take advantage of it. This is the star of the show. This is why this entire setup is so groundbreaking. This is their S1 20 watt laser, and I'm gonna open it for you guys so you can see what it looks like inside. And as you can see, I already have a screen in here. Let me increase the brightness so you guys can see. But this screen I burned yesterday and I made a crucial mistake. So what had happened was this bracket right here you see on the right side, this is the fixing bracket for the screen, and I put it on the left side. You're supposed to put it on the right side. When you go to actually print from the software, you're going to get an error message, and it's going to say something's wrong. So make sure you put this bracket on the right side, and this comes with the screen printing setup um, as part of this bundle. So this is a fairly large print, and it only took an hour and 44 minutes to actually finish, which is pretty crazy. And, um, you know, if this was done the traditional way, this would have taken five, six hours sometimes, depending on who's doing it. And if you're like a professional, maybe you can get it done sooner than that. But uh, I remember back in the day when my father owned a screen printing shop, we would spend an, an entire day just burning screens. It took forever. So the fact that I did this in an hour and 44 minutes and I'm slow because I'm still learning the software is actually pretty cool. So really user friendly. And then over here we have the actual screen printer itself. I already have a blank ready to go for this print. And this is the platen or the wood plat or whatever it's called. And it's magnetic. So it just comes right off the base here, as you can see. I don't want to take it off. But yeah, there it is. And it snaps right into place. And we put the screen right here. Comes with a bunch of ink with this multicolor bundle. I bought some gloves separate. You have the squeegee. With the setup, you actually don't need a heat press because you could just let the ink cure for like 24 hours. But I did buy a heat gun just to speed up the process for today. With this multicolor setup, it comes with four different screens. So I actually prepared my second screen for another print for another video. I'm gonna put together a frame to show you guys how easy it is. So you need two of these big ones, the longer ones, and then two of the smaller ones, okay? And that's basically all you need to actually put the emulsion to the frame, okay? I'm gonna put these off to the side real quick and just put the frame down. I'm gonna grab the emulsion sheet and you're gonna see that it has a cardboard side and that's pretty much the side that you wanna put face down, okay? So you're just gonna put it face down until you can't move it. So once you can't move it, basically all you do is put each one of these brackets at a 45 degree angle about and then you just wanna basically push down until they kinda of lock into place. So you're gonna kinda of fill them and you can kinda of see it, see what happened there? But you also wanna make sure these are open, which is something I just messed up on. So you wanna make sure all these are open before you do this. So yeah, 45 degree angle, you just place it, you know, you place it into this groove and you push it down until it kinda, of, you know, falls into place. Just make sure these are aligned properly because there is like a groove that it falls into. And now you can close them and it's going to stretch the screen is what it's doing. So I kind of try to do it even as possible. And it is going to be hard to close, you know? You should feel some sort of tension, if you will. It's starting to get dark here, so I'm sorry about the light, but that should give you a pretty good idea of the way it looks when it's done. And now you can see that it's perfectly tight on there. Another thing that I kind of found a little weird and tricky is you have to turn it around and remove this cardboard. And I noticed there's this ad adhesive that kind of gets stuck on it. Um, so kind of be careful when you're, you know, lifting it up, but try to work from one corner and then just sort of roll your way in, kind of like this, see? And you'll see that there's sticky stuff. And again, I don't know why that happens, but it did. So you kind of see that sticky part right there getting stuck, so. Ugh. Before we get to this point, I need to show you how to actually prepare the artwork in their proprietary software, which is really easy. Let's go check it out. The software that I use to prepare my artwork for the laser is called Xtool Creative Space, and there's two different versions. When you go to their website, you're going to notice that it says download V2 or 2.0 beta recommended. Now, I did download it. I had a couple issues with it, so I ended up going back to the previous version, which I actually kind of like a little more, to be honest with you guys. I just like the layout more. I think it's a little, um, I don't know, it just seems more like Photoshop to me. 
The newer version is very bare bones. I ended up reverting back to the previous version, which is 1.7.8. When you first open up Xtool Creative Space, you're going to notice that your laser is not going to show up. And that's because you have to plug it in with the USB-C cable that was included with your machine. Once you set it up the first time, you can actually set up Wi-Fi, which is what I did, and connect it with Wi-Fi and you don't need this cable anymore, which is pretty nice. Oh, and I need to turn my machine on. That's a good idea. Once your machine's on, you're going to see it on the Wi-Fi list or USB uh, if you're using USB. I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm just gonna click Wi-Fi, select Xtool S1, and there you go, it's already connected, really easy. Now let's go to my desktop real quick and I'm just going to drag my artwork in there wherever the hell it is, right there. So I'm just gonna click and drag. And as you can see, it looks like a, um, you know, like a cutout, right? And we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is go to processing type and click engrave, and that's pretty much it. So now it's an engraving. Now we do need to select one more thing. And if you click on the canvas, you're gonna see that it says laser flat. We don't want that. We actually wanna click on that and head down to screen print, okay? That's the preset for the actual screen printing machine. And under material, you're probably gonna guess it. We're gonna choose that coded screen. So we're gonna go down to coded screen. It's 100 mesh for all of you guys that care. Um, and actually, it's pretty important to know that it's 100 mesh because when you're preparing your artwork, especially with bitmapping, you need to know that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's pretty much it right there. And then we're gonna click our, we're gonna basically like drag over our artwork so we select everything. And what I wanna do is actually rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. So where is it at? Let's go 90 degrees, 90. And I also make sure that where this red uh, crosshair is, that's actually where my laser is pointing. So I know that that's actually the front of the screen. So what I wanna do is actually do negative 90 degrees instead. So that's good to know. Always pay attention to where your base and your, your, you know, your, the top of your screen is. So there you go. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how do I know how far down to put it on the screen? Because, you know, obviously we have a collar on a t-shirt, right? So I usually go two and a half to three inches down. So the cool thing about the software, or pro I don't even know what to call it, a program, um, you can actually insert a rectangle. So like we can change the dimensions right here to match the exact width of, you know, how far down we want our print to be on the shirt. So there you go. So let's select our artwork again and drag it down until it meets the bottom of that rectangle and there you go now we can delete that rectangle and our artwork is now ready to go i recommend centering it before deleting the rectangle because you just want to make sure that you know on the left and right side it's completely centered that looks pretty good to me so i can delete this and that's pretty much it so it's going to have some recommended settings okay and you can just use the settings that they give you so if you select the artwork you're going to notice that um, my power says 55 percent it um, wants a speed of 162, and then it, you know lines per centimeter is 200. Now, that's fine. You know, I'm just gonna trust it because it probably knows more than I do. So if you find that it's not working for you, you can always experiment with that. But be careful. Do it at your own risk. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, the cool thing is if we're doing multicolor, let's just say these stars, for example, are multicolor. We can actually choose to ignore a certain colors. So when you go to burn the screen, or sorry, engrave the screen. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to actually ignore that specific color that you asked it to ignore. So that's kind of how you create multicolor. And we're going to get into that later. But for this video, I'm keeping it simple since it is my first project. Another thing you want to do is reflect your artwork. So we're going to select our artwork and we're going to go up to reflect and we're going to reflect vertically. And that's actually the proper way of doing it because when, if you were to print it normal, it's going to be like backwards on the shirt, if that makes sense, or it's not gonna be legible. So I just click distance because I actually have to do it again since I closed the software. And there you go. So it said it is 0.691 inches from the mesh, which is, you know, what it was before. And then I'm gonna click process now, and it should let me go to the next screen, which it did. And you're going to see the estimate of time. So it should let you know how long it's gonna take. Now it's only saying 117 minutes. This program will take you no time at all to master. It's really user friendly. Once it's finished engraving the screen, you can take it out now safely. I turn the machine off when I do this. I just make sure it's not on just for safety reasons. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You take it out and then we wanna flip it now. And then we wanna put it into the groove right here and you're gonna see it kind of snap into place too. So there you go, it's already done. Really that simple. And then once you snap that into place, you could just close these to lock it and it's not going anywhere now. And from here, you wanna actually place your shirt. So let's go ahead and just do a basic gildan. This is a heavy cotton, 100% cotton. We are working with water-based ink, so 
you know, it's kind of important that you use cotton. So we're just gonna put this over the platen. There's this board right here. I'm gonna put this on there first. Oh, it's actually sticky. There you go. So now we can put our shirt on there. And I don't have like an iron or anything to flatten the shirt or a normal press. So I can't really, you know, get all the wrinkles out right now. So I'm just gonna go for it. I wish I had like a heat press so I can, you know, press the shirt and flatten it more because that also really helps your print. But the truth is I don't. So it's a very thin cotton. I'm not gonna lie, I hope it works. And as you can see, it's obviously not, you know, the distance that we want. So we can use this knob right here to lower it. Right there. We do want a little bit of give. The only thing that's kind of throwing me off is that the distance between the print and the collar seems off to me, but maybe not. Let me take my tape measure. Yeah, it's more like three inches. <laughs> that's not that's not exactly what I wanted. So let me move it down a little bit more. Part of like the whole learning process, right? I gotta figure out exactly where this collar should be sitting. And I don't really know that quite yet. So if you have to mess a couple blanks up, totally fine. In my case, I'll probably mess like 30 up before I really get it down, but you know, you guys are gonna go with me <laughs> and figure this out. And what I'm gonna do is actually tape off kind of the, the corners because I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to be a mess. So let's go ahead and tape off the frame, make sure it stays nice and clean because this is my first print and I just don't want anything to, uh, you know, I, I want to keep it as clean as possible, pretty much. You're supposed to take an air compressor or something and blow out the uh, any debris, but I didn't do that, so oops. So we have to flood the, the ink first. So what I'll do is I'll get my ink right here. I have black, of course I'm going with black. You can mix these inks too, you know, like get, you can buy these inks in, you know, bigger containers and all right, nice and flat surface. This is probably gonna turn out really shitty, but we'll find out right now. I haven't done this in so long, guys. I'm not even kidding. It's been so long since I've done any sort of printing. I don't know how much ink I need. Now I'm gonna take my, my screen squeegee here and we're just going to flood the screen first. Make sure it's nice and flooded. More ink, please. God, this ink has a smell to it though that I am not used to. And really flood it now. Dude, that's actually really good. I am not gonna lie. That actually turned out way better than I anticipated. Holy shit. Whoa. I have a little bit leading on the left side because I went a little crazy, but it's because my squeegee is not big enough for the print. But what I'm gonna do real quick is open a window because I'm gonna die from all the fumes in here. Let's plug the heat gun in. Just wait until you see this, guys. And then you can just let this sit for 24 hours. You don't really need the heat gun. I'm just doing this to like pre-cure it so I can at least show you guys without it smudging or ruining. They should... Oh, there's a fire alarm. The fire alarm went off. I have a tiny space, guys. I don't think I'm gonna use the heat gun in here from now on because I did not know that was gonna happen. But yeah, let's take it off and take a look at it. I'm trying not to ruin the print. Is that not good for my first print? What the heck? It looks centered too. I don't know how I did that. Or is it centered? I don't know, you're seeing it from a distance. It's probably not perfect, but dude, guys, I haven't printed since I was a kid. I've been focusing on design tutorials for you guys. I haven't printed since I was a kid. This machine allowed me to make a perfect print. So, you know, you could come up with reasons to hate on something, but like, honestly, I can't find one thing to not like about the setup. It's so easy to use. And the, the fact that I was able to get this clean of a print and I'm ready to go, like I can keep printing. You know, I'm gonna do a tote bag right now, but this is crazy good. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry. Very impressed, guys. This thing makes it way too easy to print though, dude, really though. I remember back in the day, me and my dad would literally spend like eight hours trying to get one print done and then we didn't even get it done and we had to do it the next day. I'm gonna do it again. Oh yeah, I screwed that one up, but it actually kind of looks cool because it looks like I textured it. it. It's cool, but it's not what I would want for, for you know a print. Simple as that, guys. Honestly, like what, what is there to say? I mean, it's super user-friendly. All right, I'm gonna clean it off and then we're gonna move on. Here's my verdict. If you don't have the space for a full screen printing setup, this machine is going to be perfect for you. If you are on a budget and you can't afford, you know, a professional screen printing setup, this entire bundle that I have right here is on sale right now. You can use the affiliate link in the description below to pick it up. My wall right here is only about 10 feet, guys, and I fit this entire setup. So if you have even slightly 
bigger space than me, this is going to be amazing for you. Now, if you have a garage or anything like that, then I definitely recommend getting a full screen printing setup if you really have the budget for it. But still, if you don't have the budget for it, this is going to be a welcome addition to your home setup. I mean, honestly, I couldn't ask for more, you know, ready to use screens, they're ready in 30 seconds. I mean, and if you don't make any mistakes setting this entire machine up, you can start printing in as little as two hours. So it's a really, really fast, easy to use setup. I'm gonna give this Xtool screen printing setup my seal of approval, I think it's amazing. Now, if you're somebody that's looking to do large bulk orders, like you're printing thousands of shirts, this isn't going to be for you. But if you're a DIYer like me, and you're just at home in your small office, this is going to be perfect for you. Link in the description below. Huge shout out to Xtools for making this video possible and letting me check out their equipment. We're gonna make more videos on this, guys. So leave a comment, let me know what you guys wanna see in the next one.